Yeah, right, what's up, guys? We are at most sport this week. Um, I think I, we raced here a couple seasons ago. Interested to see how the Audi does here. Because uh, when it first came out, I had trouble with elevation changes, and this track's all about elevation changes. So if that's still a problem, this track is definitely going to bring that to light. Um, weather. Default weather, 78 Fahrenheit, 110 Fahrenheit on the track, metric 26 Celsius, 43 Celsius uh, afternoon. So default weather across the board. Just going to take out the Silverstone set because that is definitely the most fun set I have driven yet. And we'll just get warmed up here. Hard track to pass out. There's one long straightaway, but you gotta get a run out of this section. Why is it a little tricky section? Just gotta really get the feel for it. Takes a lot of practice, running a lot of laps. Especially if you're running single screen, that's pretty difficult little section there. Like always, I'm just really taking the easy first couple laps. I'll slowly move up my braking points. I like to take the uh, more conservative approach to warming up. A little loose there. car is just exhibiting some tendencies to be loose. Alright, just keep it in third gear through there. But yeah, it seems a little loose on throttle right now. It's hard corner because you really don't want to go off there. You are going to hit the wall. Felt better through there that I was carrying a little bit more speed through the beginning and entry of the corner. Second gear through here, double apex, miss that second apex. Setup's feeling a little bit better now, I'm carrying a little bit more speed into the corners. I think before I just wasn't going to the corners fast enough, so the suspension wasn't loaded up enough going into the corners, so when I'd get on the gas, I'd kind of load up the suspension too quickly and just basically transitioning weight too fast and making it unstable. So again, third through here, and I mean, it's really hard to say what the braking points are. It's kind of a more by feel thing and just figure out the natural rhythm of the track. Minute 
usually breaking right before the crest of the hill there. That nah, car feels good through there now. I'm not getting that oversteer anymore. I'm also using that knowledge that I have the car wants to turn on throttle. It's not like getting loose on me, but it's very willing to turn. So through there, I kind of felt like the car was pushing, but I had confidence in the fact that the setup was going to turn on me. So that's why I got on the gas, and sure enough, the set turned on me. A little offline there. This is another clockwise track, so I wouldn't be surprised if the tire pressures are all right. Just means the left side tires are going to get a little bit more work than the right side tires. It gets a little loose there on that more inside line, so just have to analyze that a little bit more, see what line I want to take through there. Let me just stiffen up the rear end a little bit. Or I mean loosen it up. What I meant to say is tighten it up. Tighten it up! <laughs> Sorry. I need to uh, soften it up which will make it feel more secure back there. Ignore the tighten and stiffen part. Bad word choice. Later apex through that last corner. One See, it's fine through there as long as I don't take too far an inside of line. I get that inside line is where the car starts to get unhappy. So I can really lean on the car there, which is nice. I go into that corner a little slightly too fast here. Let's see what it does. It's kind of sliding through that whole corner, but again, I could lean on it. It wasn't trying to kill me. Got a little bit of grass there, but the car just bailed me out nicely. Alright. Let's 
So these tire pressures are at. I'm guessing they're pretty balanced. Oh, I didn't see the. Fr I'd they're balanced left to right, but I wasn't expecting them to be so imbalanced front to rear. So, we'll just go up a click in the front to get into that mid 180 kilopascal range. I mean, really, honestly, nothing's jumping out at me yet to make an adjustment on the car. Just gonna do a couple more laps and get a little more used to the car and see if something jumps out because I just. Right now I'm kind of searching for adjustments and I don't ever really like that mentality when tuning a car, like something to jump out to me. It's like, okay, I need to make that better. That just hasn't happened yet. So we'll see how it behaves with a little bit more pressure in the front. Should, in theory, make those front tires a little more responsive, so maybe it'll have... Because the only thing that's kind of maybe sticking out to me is turning can be a little bit better, but I'm, again, I'm not really too sure about that yet. Carrying a little too much speed through the second half of that corner. Need to slow it a little bit down a little bit more so I can hit that second apex a little bit better. In here, I want to think later apex where that curb's ending, maybe just a little bit past that, make that the apex. Where I can hit the crest of the hill, get one apex, that swing out. Maybe could have gotten the throw a little bit sooner there. Here, I don't know where I like apex, maybe middle. That felt pretty good. And then here it compresses and you get a little bit more rotation so you can count on that. Just don't abuse it because then the car won't rotate on you if you think it's always going to bail you out. I'm pretty much getting on the throttle after I get over where that curb ends on the inside. It's a pretty safe spot to get back on the throttle. 
I got really like that line through there that time. So I'm gonna go for later apex through there. Seems to be a little bit quicker. Again through here, you have to lift a little bit as the front end drops away from you. Then you can get back into it. Pretty much get on the brakes as soon as the track straightens out. Again, I keep just carrying too much speed through there and missing that sip in the second apex. Yeah, right now this set feels pretty good, so. I think I've definitely found a good baseline for this car. Right there, there's a telephone pole, and right when you get the nose of the car um, pointed to the right of that telephone pole is where I like to get back on the gas, so point it out to your next lap. There we go. That was good. Pace through there that time. Just need to be a little bit smoother on the exit. Alright, so we're going to come up here. Okay, so now see this telephone right there, telephone pole right there. Once my nose gets just to the right of that, like after pointing it and it's starting to turn to the right of it, that's when I'm starting to find a nice little safe zone to get back on the gas. Yeah, I can carry a little bit more speed in the corner, let it come out a little bit wider. It's, ooh, yeah, see, it gets. But I remember the rough doing that back in the day. You get too far on that inside and it just seems to unsettle cars. So I don't think that's really a setup thing. I just think that's the nature of the track thing. Not too far inside, so I had to lift a little bit more normal. And what you really key off of to make sure you got the right speed there is once you get used to the you know, sound of the engine. You get used to a tone, and that tone means you're going through the right speed through there. At least that's what usually works for me. And up here, again, I'm using a braking, or I'm using a telephone pole for a brake. So this telephone pole right there, it's like the second to last one. I think I'm braking about car length, maybe car length and a half before it. That's what I'm using for a braking marker right now. So again, we're going to come, we're pointing the telephone pole, now I get on the gas. It's almost where I'm pointed at that next telephone pole. It's a little bit closer to that one for a nice, safe time to get back on the gas. And you know you'll always have enough rotation to make it through. You won't push wide. I definitely get into the <laughs> this car's fun definitely getting into lower pitches of the sound when you got the right speed through there not too fast. Wrong gear. So it's pretty much in between those two telephone poles is where I feel comfortable getting back on the gas.
That was a really good line through there. I was able to let it swing out pretty wide, and that just gives me a better room through that second corner and a better exit. Because you really want to focus on your exit versus corner. It's one of the few spots you're going to be able to make a pass everywhere else. You're pretty much going to have to just put pressure on people and hope they make a mistake. Probably a little too conservative on entry through there. Honestly, nothing's sticking out to me that I need to fix with this car. I just need to run some more laps with it, so this isn't going to be my most educational video I've ever done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I get, like, the wrong... Look at this tire. How did the tire pressures go down? Did I click down? See, it's starting pressure is 162, 165. Just go back to the Silverstone. I guess, yeah, I did go the wrong way, didn't I? <laughs> Whoopsie. Alright, so now we went up. I must have clicked down on tire pressure. Silly me. Alright, let's do five more laps, see what happens. Definitely feels a little more responsive in the front end now, which it should, because it's change of front tires by about a pound. Or, uh, it's under 10 kilopascals, so pretty big adjustment. Should be able to notice a difference in that. Front end just feels a little more secure right now, and it's it's like anything. You can just go too far one way, too far the other way. You just really got to see what the car feels like.
Oh, that was really good through there until that part I don't want to lift. Yeah! <laughs> this car is so ridiculously stable when you get in those situations. I just wanted to see if it could work with me, and boy, did it. I guess if you want to be really safe through that corner, you want to get on the gas for that second telephone pull or pretty close to it. Too fast. I had to check up big time. No, I'll do one little adjustment because on the exit of that corner, when I do get my line right, and I gotta carry a lot of speed through there. Granted, I am asking a lot out of the car, but I'd like that rear end just to hook up a little bit better. So now you see the tires are getting a little bit better. I mean, that was only two laps, so. Then I'll make an adjustment, run a couple more laps, and then see what happens. So, what do I want to do? That part of the track feels pretty bumpy, so I'm going to make an adjustment with the high speed compression dampening. Now, normally, for the most part, According to the textbooks, high speed compression dampening controls the compression stroke of the spring when you hit bumps, so on the faster movements. Not so much the uh, body roll movements, but I do believe it has an effect on that as well. So, if I take... Let's go back to that corner. We're going through here. We're getting back on the gas right there. Swing the camera around. So you can actually already see the body roll in the car. So the compression controls this spring as it's compressing. Now as we're going through this corner, So we're going through the corner of the car is rolling over to the left right so if I soften this up what's gonna happen is the weights gonna go through into this spring so it's gonna spend more time compressing the spring and then it's gonna go into the tire now if it was the other way around and I increased the compression dampening you would be stiffening up this spring basically so the spring wouldn't be compressing as much because you have more dampening in it, stiffening it up. So that weight that's going from the inside tire is going to go to this outside tire quicker because it's not spending time in here compressing. By softening it up, it is spending more time in here compressing. So this weight transfers from this side to this side in a slower fashion, which in theory equals more control. Now, I'm not doing low speed. That's low speed. High speed is more of what just is going on here when it hits the bumps. And it's it's a little bit more of a black art unless you look at telemetry. If you just try and do it by field, you kind of 
guessing a lot of the times, which is what I'm doing. But at the same time, it will control this a little bit, especially when it's a more um, aggressive maneuver when you turn it in the corner harder and the car is going to want to weight, transfer weights quicker. It'll help out with slowing that down a little bit. So I'll go back into the garage. Now the way this works is if I was to go this way with it, max damp means at zero. So that's the stiffest. If I want to soften it up, I'm going to... I want to soften it up, then I go more negative. So we're going to go five clicks more negative. So we'll just see. Bottom line is I'm just trying to get the car to... S I'm just softening up the rear roll center, basically. And when I say soften up the rear roll center, it just means I'm softening up the transition of weight from one side to the other. And when you do that relative to the front, it will make the car understeer a little bit more. And then this compression damping does focus a little bit more on the acceleration aspects of the car. Because again, we swing the camera around here. As we're getting on the gas, so not only does this control body roll, spring movement, but it also, as we get on the gas, the weight's transferring from the front to the rear. So it's going to... Again, if we stiffen this up, it's not going to spend as much, the weight's not going to spend as much time in the actual suspension or the spring. It's going to want to go to the tire more directly, which is going to create a more responsive, edgy feel. So soften that up. You're going to have a little bit more stability. Now you can always go too far. It becomes too soft and not responsive enough. So you got to find that balance between stability and response. See if we can do a couple laps here, see what the tire press are like, and then just see what this feels like. And if the car was behaving this is more of a fun, this is definitely a fine tuning adjustment. If the car is behaving much worse and then you want to adjust roll bars, ride heights, stuff like this, but we're kind of in the fine tuning stages because the car just does feel pretty good right now with this setup in it. And the negative effects I'm looking for is just too much understeer. So if I don't really notice that and it feels a little bit better, then we have gone in the right direction.
Ravens. So the green kicked out there, but it, it was much more controllable and it didn't feel quite as edgy. So I like the way the car feels right now. I think my relative is off a little bit, but I think that's just more to me and not really hitting the best lap. Yeah, it feels a lot more stable coming out of there, too. One Yeah, that was a bad line through there. It was really shallow. I had to put a lot of wheel on it and got on the gas pretty aggressive and hooked up rather nicely. Actually, just went purple in that sector. It was more stable on that inside line there too, which is good. Yeah, just got a little more confidence in the car and that always makes you a little bit faster. You can just start pushing it, leaning on it just a little bit more. Let's see if we can get a better, ah, uh, no, too much speed through there. Do about three more laps, see what the tire pressures are like, and then probably call it. Felt awesome through there, even though I caught a little bit of grass in the beginning of the corner. Oh! <clears throat> that was interesting. Hit a bump. Kind of got a little sideways on me, but power slid through it very nicely. Another purple sector. Sweet. Wasn't the best middle through exit there but the car is definitely more stable Best lap. Oh, my other best laps were like on the first out lap, so that's good that my best lap was a couple laps in that time.
And another bad line through there, just pushing it. Alright. I'm happy with the car the way it is. Looks like those rights are actually getting a little more work than the less, but... I don't know. I'm going to leave it there for now. Not sure the less have had enough time to really come up to their optimal pressures. They're probably still building pressure, so I think that'll equalize nicely. Or at least get a little bit closer. Sure. I think I'm going to call it. I'm just stoked I have a setup. A good baseline now that I can just don't have to do much adjustments to. And it's... Sure, it'll be halfway competitive, stable, all that fun stuff. So, yeah, I guess, till next time.